Hello, welcome back to the channel, I'm EVM and today it's all about these things, not Volvos, plug-in hybrids. They're a divisive bunch in EV community. Some people think they're the spawn of the devil and need to be banned and some believe that they still, for now, not forever but for now, have a key role to play in the electrification of the driving fleet. This video is about the usage of plug-in hybrids. Who do they suit? Because they have a quite unique usage pattern, probably more niche than a full electric vehicle does. I personally believe that plug-in hybrids, under the proper usage pattern, still have a purpose. I mean, it'd be lovely for everybody to get a full electric vehicle, but let's face it, there's a lot of usage patterns out there. There's a lot of people that simply can't get one yet. I'll use my parents as a, as, as the same example once more. They live in a town of 55,000 people that share four, four fast chargers. Not rapid chargers, fast ones, seven kilowatt. Now, although my parents could get a full electric vehicle, they cannot charge at home, they'd have to rely on a single site of four fast chargers, along with 55,000 55, other people, and of course, visitors. That would be unrealistic to expect anybody to do that, wouldn't it? I think it would be a little naive to say, oh, no, 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 you'll be fine. I mean, don't get me wrong, they'll be fine for 80, 90% of the time. But let's face it, no one can ring up and go, can't come into work today, I'm afraid I can't put fuel in my car, the, uh, the chargers are down. So the point of this video, ultimately, is that, yes, plug-in hybrids are a thing for some people. And we're going to try and find you that usage pattern. If you have this, if you do this, then a plug-in hybrid maybe your only electrification option. However, a lot of people out there use a plug-in hybrid as the path of least resistance tool to get something that means they don't have to worry about learning something new or trying something new. No matter how easy it is to own an electric vehicle, people will naturally choose something that's, that's easy as opposed to better. So we're gonna look at the whole thing who it suits. You know, the, the reason we're going on a long journey is because we have to, but we're using it as a, as a good excuse to effectively say, well, yes, if you're doing long journeys, plug-in hybrids make no sense at all. So who is it for? Because the logic always comes back to me, if you can plug in a plug-in hybrid, you can plug in a full electric vehicle. Towing and various other things aside, why not get a, a, you know, a full electric vehicle instead of a FEV? They're, they're unnecessarily complicated, even though I've never heard of a plug-in hybrid with any reliability issues, again, I get that, I can understand it. For me, a plug-in hybrid is for those, and it's discussed more in the other video I just mentioned, but it's for those who have unreliable charging. Like my parents, they could charge most of the time, but there will be times where it's simply not an option, and that's why they would need that backup of the petrol engine, unfortunately. It shouldn't exist, but it does. The infrastructure's not there yet in swathes of the country to support people who can't charge at home and then have to rely on that infrastructure. So that's effectively what this is about. Who is a FEV for? Because there's no point in buying one if you never plug it in. There's no point in buying one, as we're about to show you, if you're doing lots of long journeys. So what is the solution? Who is a FEV for? That's what we're trying to find out. No matter at what point you switch to full electric, there's going to be people going, oh my God, no matter when that is. Yeah. Like sooner, you know, sooner rather than later, probably, you're going to have the same problems either way. Maybe that's the thing, isn't it? They can't rely on the infrastructure yet. Whether no. it's perceived or reality, there's not that reliability there. No. I don't know if that's going to work. Well, there is. Tesla, that, Tesla aside, until I get there. Yeah. Most of them will, but some of them don't, therefore, that's it. No one goes out with a person who's 95% reliable. No, no, no. You're not going to beat my kids up, are you? No, 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 no. Not all the time. Not unless they annoy me. Yeah, never mind. So, and it's the same. It only needs a slight little bit, doesn't it, to put people off. Yeah. You don't need statistics. Oh, well, 95% of your journeys are fine. Yeah, but that 5% is going to ruin it. For everything else, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's where I'm stuck in between with this FEV argument, because... Some are using it as an excuse who could clearly, clearly go for a full electric right now. Yeah. But then some are using it as a proof of concept to then get a BEV. And I know the argument, well, just go straight to the BEV, but 
we're dealing with human people. You yeah, know, condition. It, you know, human it, it, you know, people. It's we, weaning people off, isn't it? Yeah. Like you said, I think it's the methadone plan. Do we accept that people aren't perfect and will need reassuring when they shouldn't? They will not not do the best thing for them. Yeah. So therefore, let's run with that. And what's the best way of doing it? If we accept that some people gonna, will always need this, yeah, yeah, there's no point in saying we shouldn't need that. Need people, we, we do. So rather than pretend it doesn't exist, let's let's just try and control it. Yeah, I just think that manufacturers are putting far too much effort into fevs at the expense of I think the so. full electric stuff. So it's it's slowing down that. It's not a long term thing, is it? A fev? It's just, no. You know, five years from now, and I'm picking that out of the air. I don't see. A purpose anymore for a plug-in hybrid, no. apart from some very, very small usage patterns, you know, big towing or something like that. They are more complex, although to be fair, just probably as reliable. I don't well, know. that's it. No, no one has ever looked at a Prius over the last what twenty years and thought they were unreliable. So unreliable. I, I can't believe all those taxi drivers use them. Yeah. So I can see the complexity argument, but in reality, they don't seem to break down. Certainly, no more than a normal yeah, petrol engine yeah. car. The uh, mil- militant EV people mm-hmm. think we should ban FEVs. They don't have a purpose on the road. And I say, well, if you, if you live in that niche that fits yes. the FEV world... Then it has a purpose. My question is, no one can argue that 100% of people right now cannot possibly own an EV. So affordability, towing, charging problems. Yeah, there's yeah. enough, there's millions of people that right now cannot, yeah. no ma- unless they're massively inconvenienced, not going to happen. So if we ban the FEV, are they basically saying, well, keep on buying petrol or diesel cars and, leap. and, and ignore the FEV? Well, I'll just use my diesel instead. Oh, no, you can't use diesel. Oh, well, what am I going to do? Use, useful electric. But I need to tow something. Useful electric? <laughs> yeah. And that is what I mean. You can't just wish something into existence. So that's where I think the FEV is still for now, for a short time. I think for a, a short thing. time, yeah. A thing. So why pretend they don't exist this is why we review fevs well yeah why why should people who can only who are stuck in that rut for now oh we don't want to help them choose a car no 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 because they're choosing something which i disagree against and that's what i don't like it's still better than the alternative isn't it well i think of a diesel you'd think so wouldn't you but i don't know let us know in the comments should if fevs are going to disappear is you can't possibly think that 100% of people could own an EV. So that must mean that you want them to carry on using petrol and diesel until they can get a BEV. Is that, is that what... I can't that, imagine that's what they're saying. Well, it would seem that way, wouldn't it? Well, that's it. There's no logical argument for the, the, the destru- destruction of FEVs. Don't get me wrong. People use it as an excuse, as we've said, to, to not get a BEV. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I think that's a thing. Manufacturers are putting too much... Too much effort into yeah, too it. much resources into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But even from an environmental point of view, which would you prefer? If you're if you're one of these that thinks FEV should be banned, would you prefer people to carry on using that diesel SUV instead of a yeah. FEV SUV? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a thing. That, that fine if that's what you're saying, but no one ever answers that. I mean, let's face it: the environmental thing isn't to get an electric vehicle. Well, let's use public transport, isn't it? And everywhere? walk and cycle. Walk and cycle. But yeah, yeah. That's too inconvenient. And too expensive, probably. I'm too expensive. <laughs> if you have a choice, fair enough. But I, I, I prefer the educational what? argument. What would you respond to better? The shock tactics? I mean, we're, we're going to pick on the vegan, vegetarian thing. That's we're it. not having to go to them. It's just a good example. Would you, pref- would you be persuaded to not eat meat by the shock tactics of you know, dead animals and abattoirs? Well, or by someone going... This is the benefit of if you don't eat meat. Yeah, yeah, Can I talk be- to you about it? You know, this is, these might be the health benefits, the environmental well, of benefits. Of course that works better. Yeah. And that's the same thing I think we need to do with EVs. Don't have a go at someone for their choices. Try educate and educate them. them. Yeah. And the thing is as well with EVs, there's so much unknown, isn't there? If you come from a petrol uh, or a diesel car. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> but it's not. But that's where the education comes in. Exactly. Uh, so... I think, I think people need to just lighten up sometimes. And I think persuading someone to get into something because it saves them money is more effective than banging on about the oh, environment. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can say it's better for this and better for that, and we do. That's why I've never, never, ever, in six years of doing this channel, said buy an EV for environmental reasons. Because it comes across as preachy. People well, no don't one likes like being it. lectured to, do no, they? No one likes being lectured to. No. 
So I guess we've now got to say, is it right for you though? Because as we're kind of proving now, on long journeys, plug-in hybrids make no sense from a fuel MPG sort yeah. of perspective. You will not get 140 miles a gallon. Oh, no, no, no. Not Definitely close. Definitely not. If you're doing 20, 30, 40 miles a day, you will, if you plug it in anyway. Yeah. But even if you plug it in on a long journey, the further you go, the, the worse just, it gets. It just becomes a petrol car. Well, it's then. dropping now. It's dropping now. It covers a few genres, does a fev, but it doesn't have its own. Yeah, yeah. So then everyone's like looking at it as an interloper in their genre. Electric vehicle owners, no, 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 we don't want we don't want that. No, no, no. Petrol heads, no, 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 we don't want fevs. That's too green. Adds all the weight. Yeah, uh, so I think that's why it gets a lot of stick. So ultimately, who should buy a fev? No more than 40, 50 miles in between charges. charges yeah. So per day, usually. For people that, and to, well, to answer the argument of if you can plug in a plug-in hybrid, you can plug in a full electric, only if it's 100% reliable. Yeah. It's about reliable infrastructure, not, no, not non or... Which sub- there isn't enough of at the moment. Is there it? isn't, no. We could not own a full electric vehicle at the moment where we live. If you couldn't charge at If home. we couldn't charge at home. It's a significant advantage. Oh, yeah. You get this amount of people buying cars. Can you charge at home and easily own an EV? Whoop. Can you reliably charge? Whoop. Yep, it's smaller and smaller and smaller. It gets smaller and smaller to the point, you know, do you need to tow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there is a portion of people where this would make perfect sense, the plug-inness, the hybrid rather. But it is a small amount. And I think the manufacturers are, are just using it to keep producing the petrol engine for as long as possible, to give them time to tool up. To tool up the age change. To do the Toyota thing. Yeah. Whether you agree with it or not is another kettle, uh, different kettle of fish, really, different discussion. But I think manufacturers need to accelerate it the demise of, of the FEVs. Yeah. yeah but yeah. people also have to give it more time. I think that's the thing, is it? At, at the end of the day, most people are going to have to be forced into it, aren't they? It's... Hence the ban. Yeah. He's giving manufacturers a target to aim for, people a timeline, timeline, and I think it makes sense. Because people don't like change. No, no, of course they don't like change. Oh, God. Never, there's never a good time, is there, for change? No. Nope. Some people need to be educated, some people need to be told. There's not one size fits all, and I think that's why the, on either side, the, the, the fanatical argument, the militant side, yeah, yeah. doesn't work. So short journeys. Short journeys. And uh, occasional long journey. I think so, yeah. It's a fev owner. Yeah. If you never plug it in, I mean, you know someone that's got a 330E. Yep. Have they ever plugged it in? in no. The, how long do they own it? Uh, uh, a year. A year, and they've never plugged, never plugged it in? in. No. So I would say they bought the wrong car. I would well, it's a company car. A company car, and there and there we go. That's yep. where most fevs are coming from, I think, isn't it? I can't be bothered plugging it in, and it's not my choice. You don't, I'm just ticking a box on a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. I'll have that I car, please. I'll get a fuel card. <laughs> yeah, fuel card. So I don't care about the cost either. I mean, on this journey, we're going to have to stop to fill this car up with petrol once. I think we are. If yep. we'd have taken my EV, we'd have stopped to fill that electric vehicle up once. Same. It's the same thing, but I can charge at home, and I, it's easy for me to live with. If it isn't, you know, if we lived in our first houses, that's not a chance. Not a no, chance no, going to no, happen, no. is it? You know. No. Right. Well, uh, I guess we'll come back at the end of this journey to find out how much we got in MPG terms on this. Was it 360, 70 mile journey? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. See how many trees we've killed. Yeah, and that ultimately will prove they're not for long journeys. Well, will it? Oh, well, yeah, will it? <laughs> the battery's empty. Is the battery empty now? Yeah. Right. And that's it, it? As soon as the Fev battery goes, you just sat on it's your... just a petrol car yeah. with, well, a self-charging hybrid. Yeah, that's oh, all mild. it is. That's all it is. That's what that 330E guy has got. He's got, yeah, yeah. Because he never plugs it in. But he can't charge at home, can he? Uh, he probably could if he wanted to. Easily, or yeah, yeah. he's got a drive? Uh, the back of the house, yeah. So that's just laziness. No, it's just... And he's not paying for fuel. Yeah, yeah, there's no incentive for him to do that, is there? I bet he had the option of a Tesla if a 330E was on the list. Probably did, yeah. pricing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, we'll see you when we get nearly home, if the traffic allows us. If we us. ever get there. If we ever get there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oof. Mm. <laughs> Even though it's a really comfortable car. Yeah, it's still... Still a lot of driving.
Yeah. So how do the Audi drivers that do 600, 800 even miles in a day without stopping, and that's why they can't get an electric vehicle? They must have, like, a big callus on their ass. <laughs> right, so how many miles have we done? Uh, we have done, can it? Can we go in? Oh, yes, we have. We have done 357.8 miles. And the MPG? Well, should we do the total driving time? Oh, go on then. Eight hours, 21. So we've been sat in... I mean, we've done a bit of filming where it was on. So we've probably done about seven and a half hours I'd of said so, actual yeah. driving. Yeah. Uh, 42.6 MPG, which is expected from a two-litre turbo. 42. And it, it was... Pretty much fully charged when we set off. Doesn't yeah, it? so effectively, what would we get in the diesel version of this car? You'd expect, I think you'd expect to see 60, wouldn't you? In, given the roadworks yeah, and that we had. Modern back. diesel, probably 60. 60 odd, right, so you're looking at another 40%, let's say, yeah. in fuel costs. Yeah. Environment aside, before anyone starts banging on about diesel, this is ultimate proof and evidence, which we can in you, yeah, of why yeah, a plug in hybrid. Yeah, we, we knew this before we set off, yeah, didn't we? It's, it is not for long. Journeys. No. So that's the excellent for round town. Yeah. And commute. So I, I suppose if you're doing ninety percent local, yeah, the odd uh, long yeah. journey, that won't bother you. So no. it's costing me a little bit more for the to two journeys a year. Yeah. It's usage usage pattern all again, isn't it? All down to usage, and that's yeah. effectively what I guess you need to take from this video. I'm not sure how easy how much you can yeah, see. Yeah. It. <laughs> uh, you need to look at the usage pattern that you will think you will have, yeah. and go well. We do hundred hundred odd miles, like once twice a month we could be fine that's about borderline yeah. in it any more than that yeah it won't make that much sense because the savings for local journeys are going to disappear for that one it's still a valid product absolutely in this day and age definitely i think again fevs have a use yeah. but be careful with your pattern so right thanks for watching see you soon Cheers. see you subscribe Subscribe, and join. Join if you want to be a member and pay a paltry 99p mm -hmm. for all the extra stuff. An absolute bargain. Absolute bargain. ev-man.co.uk tells you all the details. Um, so that's it. Done. Bedtime now? I think so. Oh, there oh, we go. that's it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Even the car knows. Even the car's gone. Right, cheers, guys. Bye.